As a DJ or music producer, mastering self-promotion is essential for landing gigs, getting music signed, and building your own fan base. When it comes to being a DJ or music producer, mastering the art of self-promotion has always been the key to getting all the good stuff. I.e. getting tracks signed to labels, more DJ gigs, coverage in magazines and blogs, beat port number ones, more Spotify streams, the list is endless. The skill about being able to shout about yourself, promoting yourself, when essentially sometimes no one is listening, is a skill honed over time. Some will be naturally better at this, but for others, like myself, shy, introverted types, it's a lot harder. So today, we're gonna to look at my essential tips for mastering this skill. If you are new here, I'm Graham, and I founded the website Data Transmission, the Dance Music Authority, way back in 2008. In 2015, I started working with a young artist called Ben Sterling at the time, and essentially helped him get his music signed to places like Origins and Hot Creations. I helped him with his social media and helped him grow his channels. We covered him loads on data transmission to extend his reach. Then, when Ben went on to his next adventure in 2018, I had this aha moment that if Ben needed that sort of help, other DJs and producers would need it too. So I started my Instagram account, which at first was a faceless account with just like tips and strategies. I was definitely a bit too shy to put my face out there and there was no way I was talking to camera. And if you've ever felt too shy to talk on camera or felt too shy to even comment, give me that comment today, put me a little hands up emoji. We're all here together and be part of this community together that helps us all grow. And before all that even happened, someone told me that I don't have the voice or face for making content and being on the internet. And that's always played on my mind. Those early Instagram posts got a great engagement, but not as much as they would have done if my face had been there. Then in 2018, I decided to push myself more. I needed to be the face. People will interact with your face and people will interact with you. And I started this YouTube channel. And you can look at my first video. Look at it, it's terrible. The background was awful. There was no script or even little script. I don't sound great or even look great on screen. But it was a start. I came online and started pushing through my fear. And I started speaking to camera and facing the demons. I knew that connecting with you all and being the face on camera would help me better achieve my goals to help more artists, which essentially helps you more and it would help me achieve my goals that I'd set out for this channel. And one of the big goals is trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. And if you're not subscribed to this channel and do get value from this channel regularly, or if you're new here and want to learn more about business side of making music, growing your Instagram channels, then don't forget to subscribe. And becoming a subscriber will really help me grow the channel. And I really appreciate it. It would help me get my goals. And since starting this channel, I've got better at speaking, I think. We've streamed for thousands of hours on Twitch and YouTube, and I've built a following across this channel and my Instagram of over 60,000 DJs and producers. I've built DJs from the ground up who are too shy to go on camera, who now speak on camera and now massive audiences. And that's because I use my internal shyness and I can empathize where they're at and I can help them gently to get the next step and the next step. I've definitely been there and I've definitely felt it in every single video too, even before making this one. I still feel awkward before I even turn the camera on and everyone does. I still have to push myself to make content every time. So I truly know how daunting it is making content and putting yourself out there. I bet most of you think, why should I bother doing it? No one's gonna listen to me and no one wants to hear the tracks or my music. But there are results out there. You only have to look at people like Fish56 Oxgen and see the audience he's grown over such a short space of time that people do wanna to listen to you and do wanna to listen to your opinions and your music choices and you can become online authority of music. He's had a meteoric rise over the last 12 to 15 to 20 months from essentially just putting himself out there and knowing music and building an audience around the music he loves and the music he grew up loving and the records he's loving right now. A lot of people think social media is a young person's game but it's not or you have to look a certain way and you don't it's actually about having something to say having knowledge in micro areas gives you the edge and if you've been a massive music fan for such a long time then you have a massive knowledge of records and music and for anyone that's been a DJ for a length of time you've got this You've got that knowledge and it's all up here. And you potentially up here have a massive database of content. It's about getting it out there and building yourself and getting your courage to get it out there. Mr. Oxygen has also shown that it's possible to still build a fan base across these platforms quickly when you know what you're talking about and have a plan. His content hits the big audience once. It's educational, it's entertaining, it's fun, it's shareable. It's all of the things you want from a piece of content. He's also shown that you don't have to have professional cinematic quality content. It can be shot from your iPhone. But when it comes to making content, it's about sometimes how you say something that makes a piece of content a hit or a flop. So when you're writing your content, write yourself a little script. What do I need to say? What points do I need to say? What is my hook? And what do I want them to do afterwards? Planning your content will help you deliver it with confidence. 
That's going to help you with your delivery. It's going to show you know what you're talking about, which sometimes I still have a problem with. I just recorded that line five times to get it right. The little st uh, uh, stutters come in and go, and I make mistakes, and we have to edit them out. A big one for me is feeling awkward before I even record, but I can guarantee that 99% of everyone else that puts out content will feel exactly the same way. There is only 1% of people that naturally do this, that flip the camera and go for it, and they record a one-hit wonder. The rest of us are all in the same boat as you, but some of us know we've got a do it and when this is the game now to make the content to grow as an artist and a DJ or whatever you're trying to achieve by putting yourself out there it's going to help you achieve your goals and get you what you're trying to achieve so the first step is being brave and push yourself out your comfort zone and I can guarantee you the first piece of content you're going to make is going to be absolutely rubbish and then it's about making the improvements one percenting about every piece of part of the content can you improve the script can you improve the video can you improve the audio can you improve the editing can you have more b-roll can you make it look better the colors better there is so much you can improve with every little video. The next thing I want to talk about when it comes to self-promotion is brand cohesiveness. How do you look online? The first part about building brand is your photos and what you look like online. Do you have a strong profile image? And the best way to do this is hire a professional photographer and get some professional press shots. Professional photographers will charge you to get really good photos and they'll give you a batch of 30 to 50 photos of yourself in different scenarios and take different outfits and have them photographed in different places. Maybe some on colored backgrounds, maybe some outside, but having a good selection is gonna help you with all your other content. It's gonna help you have that brand cohesiveness online. Obviously that has a cost and it's an investment to make you look better online. But there's also always a cheap way to do things. Everyone's got a phone and everyone has the ability to take a good press photo. Maybe it's one of your friends. Maybe they're the person that's always on a night out and they're always taking photos and you always look back at them and go, they've got good photos. Can they take your photos? You might not get as many, but you might get some really good stills that are just good for your brand. All you essentially need is a good head and shoulders picture. And please, for the love, don't stand there with headphones on or holding a deck or sitting on a speaker or having a mixer in your hand. They're just a bit cringe. And the fact it's going on your DJ content and your DJ social medias implies that you're a DJ. You just need to look cool. Wear some cool clothes. Maybe if you're gonna tie that into the brand colors, maybe you've got certain colors you like, that can then become your brand palette. Study pictures of other DJs and other producers and see how they stand. Then you get a selection of those photos and you can have one as your key profile picture across all your social media platforms. And then you have that consistency across all platforms. And when you do have that, it reduces the friction for people finding you afterwards. If someone finds your Instagram and likes what they're seeing, but then wants to listen to your music, it's easy to search for you on Spotify Spotify or SoundCloud or YouTube because they can quickly recognize the same photo. Like I said, once you've got that one photo, you can have your brand color palette from that photo and your colors that you're going to use. If you look at all mine, it's got blue because the artist's blueprint and it kind of everything's blue. So you have complete consistency across the brand, all my pages, and the course. For data transmission, we've always used a bright, vibrant pink, but then we also have colors for different sections, which then ties in that section so you know that certain things are a podcast or a spotlight mix or something's in the DMB DT camp. That consistency is going to build you remembering that brand. And that kind of mix and you like that last one in that series so i'm going to listen to the next one so make sure your visuals match across all channels and now you've built that brand it's time to foster that deeper connection as you start building your profile and mastering the art of self-promotion you're going to start building an audience and a community and then further down the line potential fans it's important to start building the connection with those people right at the very start talking to them asking them questions finding out more about them what are they into what do they like really trying to connect one-on-one -on -one with those fans even if you get one person commenting, keep replying to that person and ask them more and find out more about it because that's going to push the reach of the content. A key thing for me is using polls in my Instagram stories to ask questions or in my community tab on YouTube to find out more about you. As artists, you could do similar things on stories or asking for things to do in the comments. Like if you're a Nike or an Adidas fan, comment Nike or Adidas in the comments of this video. I'd love to know, just for fun. One thing I always do is go and try and reply to every comment and I've always done that right from the start, reply to every comment, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on YouTube. It's a bit harder when you when someone replies just with an emoji, but you can still try and increase the conversation. Which part do they like? Which part stirred up emotions? Which part do they enjoy? Or the other one is if someone's being negative, try and stir it a little bit more. Get that kind of conversation going, see what they do really didn't like what you were really doing wrong because it actually, it actually gives you intel as well or if they're just being super horrible and just pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and until they get to a point and then you go ah oh, thanks for the engagement because it's just pushed to reach that post even further to people that do want to see it both of these helps you understand your audience better as a plan for your content only a very small
small percentage should be actual promotional stuff, talking about sales or gigs, what you're trying to push. The rest of the stuff should be brand building content, building up your story and what you're about and what you like. So start at the start and start building up the story over multiple chunks of piece of content. Don't try and say it all in one go. One of our course members actually started back in November and his content was awful. And since then, we've been really, really focusing on building a better content strategy for him, really improving every piece of content and really thinking about what every piece of content was going to be. And for him, it's been about understanding what good content is, what good content works. And we chat about this on my group call every week. We actually review his content and say, is it good? Is it bad? Is it cringe? What can we improve? And this has really helped improve his content strategy. He's been working really hard on it and super proud of it because he's been literally been, sometimes been taking him ages to make one piece of content, but that's been a much better content than the five you would have put out previously. And he's literally gone back to posting once a week, just getting one really good piece of content every week, which is actually helping build a bigger reach on his content. And like anything at the start, it's always going to be rubbish. Like when you make music, you start off, it takes you ages to make a track, but then over time you get quicker and quicker and quicker. And it's the same with content, it's the same with anything. The practice and the consistency will make you quicker and make you better at it. Learning tools like Canva and CapCut is learning tools like your door for making music. So let's go and write down one piece of content you can make this week, one next week, one the week after, and then let's get a month worth of content just planned out of what you're trying to do and what you need to say and what you want to say and what content you can make. This could include stories about music and your journey. It could be telling the audience about a gig. It could be telling the audience about gigs that you've had in the past and just reliving some of them. Some of the content could be behind the scenes content. Maybe it's tracks you're working on, ideas you're playing with, content you're looking at, artwork you're working on, and bringing your potential community into this world of yours. And I know at the start, it might be difficult with low followers to get engagement and get any reach, but putting the right content out and working on the content is going to build that nice habit of making really good content and that's going to grow as your audience grows. And if you've got previous audience and you're changing up your strategy, please be aware that some might leave, but that's okay, especially if they're not resonating with your new style and what you're trying to achieve now. We only want the ones that are really into what you're doing now. It's essential to stay focused and on the vision of where you're going now and accept the feedback. Once you start mastering the content and mastering and building the brand, then it's essential for you to move those people into a database as you then own the data. And if for any reason your social media gets shut down, you get hacked, you can't have it anymore, you own all those followers. Trust me, we lost one in the summer and it's been a pain in the bum. Because if one shut down, those people would still move to the next platform if you can then tell them about it quickly from your database. Building relationships takes time and it takes small little movements every day forward. But by doing that, you're going to build a stronger audience of people that follow you, that want to book you, want to listen to your music, want to come to your gigs, and want to essentially follow you as an artist. If you want to learn more about becoming an artist, then I've created a brand new free training called the Artist Accelerator, which I'm super excited about. It's a brand new webinar with new ideas that you won't have seen yet. It's going to improve your social media, your network, and give you a secret cheat code for growing your music and getting more streams on your music. It's a massive unlock. If you want the link, it's in the description or comment AA in the comments and I'll comment back with a link for you. One thing I love to do is help DJs and producers and I help them by doing audits and reviews of their social media channels and I host these in regular Zoom sessions. I review the content and what they're doing on their channels and it really helps them improve what they're doing on their channels. And if you want to watch back one that I've done previously, go and watch this video next because you can see the whole breakdown of the channels we went through and see what I said about their channels and you can then apply that to your own channels. Jump into this one now and I'll see you in there. See you later. Bye.